Hey, do you have a Chevy Tahoe or maybe a Yukon or a Suburban and the rear lift gate doesn't open up? Check this out. Okay, so sitting in the back of the vehicle, you're going to look at the back of the, the lift gate, the interior cover here, and right in the middle, for this little mark right here. See that? Just a little, little mark right from the factory because General Motors knew that they were going to have problems with these. Why else would they take the time to put that in the, in the panel? Okay, I got an eighth inch drill bit. I might have to go up one, up one size, but... I'm just going to reach in with this pick tool. No, oh, it's not long enough. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Okay, so with the panel off, uh, this is a latch assembly right here. Um, this and the switch are the main two failure points on this lift gate not opening. I don't have a latch at this time, but I do have a switch for it because the switch was $12 on eBay. and The customer ordered it and wanted me to try that first since it was so cheap. I have my reservation, so I kind of feel like it might be this, but we'll switch out this uh, switch real quick and we'll see what happens. To take this switch out, you got to remove the handle. There's two, two nuts right there, and then they're going through these two holes right here. There's a 10 millimeter nut. Well, there's two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter nuts up inside there. Okay, so there's four torque screws that are holding this plastic piece on that houses the switch. T20 is the size. Here's the new switch from AC Delco. Again, this was bought off eBay for like $12.
unopened. So there's just a couple of little cutoffs in here and it just kind of sits down in there and then the tension from this being screwed down over the top of it holds it in place. Now, if this hadn't been a ten dollar or twelve dollar switch, if this was say you know anything more expensive than a ten or twelve dollar switch, all the guy would have to do would be to uh, um, check the continuity between these two terminals when this switch is depressed, and you'd be able to tell whether or not the switch was faulty, and then you could compare it to the reading off the new one. I didn't do that because, like I said, it was twelve dollars for the switch, and this is what the guy wanted to do, so. We'll put it back in, we'll see what happens. Glad I didn't bet him. I would have lost that bet. So that was pretty quick and painless, right? That was literally a $12 fix that anybody can do. You can do that. And if you don't like that hole that I drilled in the, in the interior door panel, you could get one of these push pins from any auto parts store or you can get one of the Christmas tree style ones that actually match the interior color and put over it. In this case I'm going to leave it open just leave it the way it is. It's barely noticeable. I showed it to the customer, the vehicle owner and he wants it that way in case it ever happens again he'll know how to open it himself because he says it's been this way for about six months and he, his wife was quite frustrated with it. So if you guys found this video helpful give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, check out my other content. I appreciate the support. Thank you.